Well, once again, the mountain has come alive with the ultimate snowmobiles. We are in Sunday River Ski Resort in Maine for Red Bull Frozen Rush. We're gonna unleash 900 horsepower, four wheel drive, custom built off-road race trucks and make them race on the ski slopes in the snow. It's the only time ever that the trucks do that. They're designed to race in the dirt and in the desert, but today we got 28 degrees. It's perfect conditions for both skiing and for driving race trucks on the ski slopes. Hello everyone, Jason Wygant joined by Cameron Steele, a man who certainly has a lot of experience behind the wheel of an off-road race truck, but for you or anyone competing today, this is a totally different experience. Absolutely, and it's not like they get a warm-up run. They had a couple times around the track and it is chilly inside the cab, but it is hot when it comes to racing. They want to get out there, they want to attack quickly, but this track is so tricky, especially with the fact that we've had warm weather in Maine. I think we're going to see some really rough conditions, more so than we've seen over the last couple of years. Yeah, Ricky Johnson, who was the original driver to compete in this event and test it, said he thinks the track's going to change 20 to 30 percent every single lap. So where does the experience that these drivers do have pay off? What can they do to try to adapt quickly? What I've heard a lot about is people that have experience in Baja and racing in the silt. Ricky Johnson, Rob McCachron, they've both said it. The changing terrain, something that you can read, but on the flip side, you may have the ability to read the terrain and have that Baja experience. The hard part is in the snow, you can't see where the edges are. If you've ever snowboarded or skied or been out in the snow, it's very hard. It's like flat light all the time. And so definition is very hard. So they don't know where those edges will pop up. Plus, as you said, changing all the way through every single lap makes it very tough to figure out where you're going to put the truck. And although these are the same basic trucks they would race in the dirt or in the desert, one big difference today, spikes in the tires. So they've got to adapt to that as well. But we have the best drivers in the world to do it. An all-star cast has been assembled with their awesome off-road race trucks. Let's welcome Tina Dixon to the broadcast and she'll give you an idea of some of the talent we have on hand today. Tina? And just like that title says, nine champions, one king, and I'm in the pits and it feels like a hall of fame in here. Behind me, you've got the trucks of Carl Renazetter. Think aggressive, bold passes. RJ Anderson, he's an internet sensation in his Polaris Razor. Rob McCachron, he's won just about everything out there. Think precise. Chad Horde, he's from the snow. He knows the snow. Can he use that to his advantage? Johnny Greaves, he took second in 2014, and he's excited to have his son CJ Greaves here. He's already a champion, but this is his first time racing at Red Bull Frozen Rush. Scott Douglas, he's got the oldest truck here. He's the oldest driver here, but in talking to him, you wouldn't know it. And the two drivers that everyone is talking about, Ricky Johnson and Bryce Menzies. And I spoke to Ricky, he said he feels like the underdog this year. And Bryce, he admitted he feels the pressure of defending that championship from last year. And something to point out, this truck that Bryce is racing in is the only truck to have ever won here at Red Bull Frozen Rush. Okay, thanks, Tina. Yes, the nine drivers we have assembled today are going to face off head-to-head -head in bracket-style racing as we work our way to a Frozen Rush champion for 2016. Head-to-head -head racing, we start out with four laps, and we'll actually increase the laps as the rounds go on. And with nine drivers actually entered into an eight-driver bracket, we'll have a last-chance qualifier between two of the youngest drivers, Anderson and Greaves, to see who moves into that bracket of eight. So that'll be the first race that you're going to see. Let's get a little more in depth with this racetrack. Last year's champion, Bryce Menzies, going to give you the course preview. We're lined up side by side. The emotion is, you know, it's really nerve wracking. You try to focus on your line and just to be as calm as possible. Green flag drops, then it's game on, wide open throttle. First gear, second gear, into third gear, you're crossing the Red Bull finish line. Wide open in third gear still, you got stutter bumps that you're gonna bounce through in there, but you gotta just kinda keep the truck pointed straight. So we're hard braking into the 90 degree left, downshift into second, you're going under the overpass jump, and then it tightens up really hard, so slide the truck in second gear, and then you're into third to the big tabletop jump that we got. Check up as hard as you can on the brakes, off camber, 180 left, back into second gear, back up to third, across the Red Bull finish line again. Then we're gonna take the red line this time. 
and it tightens up really fast. You got a sharp S turn. You got big whoop jumps that you're going to bounce through and try to keep the truck straight as possible. Up towards the big over under jump. We're going to hit probably around 70, 80 miles an hour as fast as we can up to the top where it's a 90 degree left. Over here you're going to go you know, left then right, you're in second gear, and then down to the bottom again, and over that crossover jump, that's huge, we're flying it, you know, 150 feet. And then we're coming into the finish line turn, wide open, as hard as we can, come to the finish line, brake, downshift into second, throw the truck in there as hard as you can with the snow and the ruts, cross the Red Bull finish line, and that's uh, course three for Red Bull Frozen Rush. Well, some ski lessons there of the off-road truck variety. What sticks out of the Bryce Menzies course preview to go fast on this track? Well, all the shifting definitely sticks out and something of interest. He's running it automatic as most of the drivers are, but something to think about as we move on through the day, Rob McCachran and uh, Johnny Greaves both running manual transmissions, which it sounds like are something tougher to be racing here. Yeah, Rob Max said he's got to shift through five gears each lap, and this is a very short course. That's amazing. Now, our first run is going to be our last chance qualifier. Two youngest drivers in the field. You got CJ Greaves will be in the blue lane in the orange truck, and the blue truck in the red lane is RJ Anderson. And it's been a lot of adapting for young RJ Anderson to be able to compete in an event like this. I sure was by far the coolest racing experience I've ever been a part of. I mean, coming from Southern California, we race in the desert. I'm almost 100 degrees warmer most of the time, my racing conditions. So that was by far the coldest thing I've ever had to experience. Well, I come from the beach, and I don't like <laughs> any cold weather, but this is spectacular. I'm looking forward to this first race. So these are the two youngest drivers in the field. CJ Greaves, 20 years old. RJ Anderson is 22 years old. And whoever wins this last chance qualifier will earn the right to go against the fastest qualifier of all in round one. That'll be Rick Johnson. So two young kids will have the chance to go up against one of the legends and one of the champions of this event. And uh, it's a lot different, actually, for Anderson, who does not normally race a Pro 4 truck like this. This is only the second time he's raced a Pro 4. Last year at Frozen Rush was his first time. Now, remember, they will have the best course of the day, so the le least amount of divots, the least amount of holes. It will break down from here on as the crowd's getting involved. This should be exciting. And it looks like CJ with a bit of the jump at the green flag, but they are side by side. They will go to two different lanes here. This is the split. Here we go, we're underway at Frozen Rush for 2016. Now, the way the courses are set up, you see Greaves getting a big advantage here, but that's by design. That lane is quicker, but then they will flip-flop and run the opposite lanes on the second lap. So essentially, they'll get to the finish potentially side by side. And here's a look at the top bull turn. This is RJ Anderson as he goes to the top of the course. Now, he'll come down through the chicane. Now, there's no tracks here. He has to find his way through as CJ goes into this lower bowl turn. Let's see how magical he can make it look. Perfection. He sets it up in one fluid turn. We're going to be watching that all day long. And now they will switch lanes. CJ will go to the left, which is the red lane, and RJ will go to the right or the blue lane. So they're going to run one of each lane in this LCQ. And it seems to me, although CJ running to the top here, maybe CJ has just a bit of an advantage, but it's so hard to tell yeah. because of the multiple lanes. Well, you can tell he's dreaming a perfect race. No huge mistakes. And now into that slalom section, chicane in racing terms. CJ looks much more aggressive in the chicane, and he's going to come out with the advantage. So CJ with the lead as they head down into the bottom ball turn, and whoa, RJ Ooh. almost has a bit of a tank swapper. Yeah, he got sideways, but he has to push right now because we're in the final corner. If CJ Greens can negotiate this cleanly, he's going to go into the bracket. LCQ winner is CJ Greaves. RJ Anderson eliminated, will not get into the Elite Eight. <laughs> you got to love what we get right out of the gate. Great racing, and that is the best track the drivers will see today. It's going to break down from there, and that chicane already hair-raising looking. Very impressive, though, from uh, CJ Greaves, who has not competed in this event ever before. He basically has had four laps under his belt, two practice, two qualifying, and then two beautiful laps here in this LCQ. Well, the major difference between the two is that CJ has been racing the Pro 4 all year. He's the Torque Pro 4 champion, won the Amsoil Cup, which is the big race for that series at the end of the year. 
So he's totally switched on to the four-wheel drive where RJ hasn't driven one since last year here at Frozen Rush. And you can really see the difference with the aggression that CJ brought through that chicane area. Beautiful turn for both drivers at the bottom of the bowl. And this is something we're going to be watching all day. How clean can you be in the bottom bowl turn? We actually saw some trucks get into the wall in that uh, bottom bowl turn yesterday in qualifying. So that's certainly a treacherous section. And remember, you're going downhill and then off camber on a ski slope. No part of this track is level. So well done for uh, CJ Greaves, who has adapted quite quickly. That you bring up a great point about that track being much smoother than it'll be later in the afternoon. Jason and Cam, I'm down here with the winner of that last chance qualifier, CJ Greaves, who this is his very first year racing Red Bull Frozen Rush. How were you able to be so aggressive and smooth with so little time on the snow? You know, that was my third lap ever on the whole track. Uh, ca uh, practice got canceled on Wednesday, so I got one lap then, one lap for qualifying, and uh, I guess this probably helped me more than it hurt me being able to get a little more track time. But the, the track's going to deteriorate. I'm glad to be here at Red Bull Frozen Rush. The guys worked their butts off to give us a phenomenal track, and uh, I couldn't do it without Maxxis, Monster Energy, Toyota, all those guys. You will now be going up against Ricky Johnson in the first quarterfinals. What are your thoughts on that race? You know, we're just going to run hard and uh, try to do no mistakes. That's the biggest thing here, and the track gets really rough really quick. So by the time we get out there, it's going to be like how I qualified. He had a smooth track, so I should have a little bit upper hand. Hopefully I can uh, put it all together and knock him out. Well, best of luck moving on, guys. The racing has started. Back to you, Jason. So the LCQ is complete. CJ Greaves, the 20-year-old, is now into the group of eight. So our bracket is set now officially for Frozen Rush 2016. And some really intriguing matchups here. The way qualifying worked out, very first race we're going to see is Bryce Menzies, last year's champ, against Johnny Greaves, the man who almost won this thing two years ago in the first round. Well, you can highlight any one of these races because there's so many heavy hitters all the way across the board. We talked about all the champions, but I do love that first round matchup between Menzies and Greaves because it's the experienced veteran, so many race wins, so many championships against this youngster who has become the, the next generation or the next level of off-road racing. And uh, Bryce Menzies has something to prove winning last year's event and he's trying to run his way through the group this year. Yeah, he's the one that everybody's looking at as this event has evolved so much. It actually started out with just Ricky Johnson doing some laps to prove it could be done. Then we did uh, timed runs. And then last year for the first time, head-to-head -head racing, Bryce Menzies came on top. It's been quite an evolution for Frozen Rush. In the natural world, evolution is something that happens over millennia. In the world of off-road truck racing, Natural Selection has a much tighter timeline. Well, it started out with a phone call. Why not take the Pro 4 up a ski resort? In 2014, the top nine drivers in the world make the leap from dirt to snow. Everybody's like, oh man, it's cold. I'm in my zone. You kind of need to drive them like you're pissed off a little bit. Are you guys ready for history? No! The Red Bull Frozen Rush goes to Ricky Johnson! In 2015, the trucks and the drivers evolved again. And the racing went door to door. Who's going to take it? Duke on the inside. A slight oh! advantage. A perfect drive on all six laps, and Bryce Menzies wins! In 2016, the evolution continues. The races will be longer, the demands on man and machine even more punishing. And this year, with the lessons from two previous editions... We found out the engine was running too cold, the shocks were way too cold. ...with the rivalries brewing from two previous races... Johnny, my ass is here, come kick it. ...for the nine drivers who have migrated to Sunday River, Maine in the dead of winter. The emphasis is no longer on survivability. It's on victory. So Ricky Johnson, the innovator of this event, the first ever champion of it, but he got beat last year by his young student, Bryce Menzies. Looks like he's out for revenge this year. Tina Dixon has Ricky Johnson, who was fastest qualifier. Ricky Johnson was our number one qualifier, and Ricky, you looked like you did it with precision, but what were you able to figure out that you can apply to today's race? 
Well, what I found out is entry points. You know, uh, I haven't driven since last year, so the first, I have to be honest, the first day I was a little bit skittish. You know, I was very early braking, letting off. Yesterday I just said, I have to give it all I got. But I still left a little bit on the table, but let's be honest, I had the best track possible. You know, the snow deteriorates so bad, probably 20% per lap. And I had Chad Horde go out first so I could use his braking points, his acceleration points, his lines, and then I could run on the smooth line and do everything that I wanted to do. So I'm not uh, pounding my chest too hard that I was fast qualifier because I had the best pick. But Douglas Motorsports, Red Bull, Method Wheels gave me and BF Goodrich Tires gave me the best package. So we made a small adjustment on the shocks to get a little bit more balance out of the vehicle. And I think we got a good, good consistent pressures for the inner liner and the outer liner for the tires. So now, it's, now I'm going against eight other guys that are all champions. So I'm stoked to be up front. And just like the title says, nine champions, there's one king, best of luck today, Thank you. guys. So Ricky Johnson certainly wants to knock off Bryce Menzies, but you have to worry about Johnny Greaves being back in competition this year. He did not race the event last year, trying to catch up and learn from what he missed in uh, 2015. And you never know with Johnny Greaves, man. He could figure this thing out quickly. Absolutely, and the one thing is he really has something to prove also because of that win, or win taken away, I should say, from the first time. And uh, I think there's a lot of excitement coming from him. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, part of that is the mental preparation as he builds the confidence to go and try to win a race like this. You know, we definitely have a plan coming in and you get here and your first thing is is concerned about the temperatures, you know, getting the trucks out of the semi. Are the truck batteries going to be dead because they're frozen? But uh, once all that's handled, then it's just, you know, gearing changes, suspension changes. You know, hopefully we got everything uh, working the way we want. Practice for me is going to be all about just hit my marks, get my timing down. Forget about missing last year. He has not missed a beat from when he was here in 2014. Qualifying, you're just trying to get it right and then pick it up from there. Oh, big drift oh. and into the wall. So race day, Sunday River, hour before go time, and it's all about getting my shit together. Clean runs, let's make it happen. Uh, can you say shit? 30 seconds to go, game face is on. Well, there's only two guys moving on to that final race, and I want to be one of them. Off the line, beat those guys to the first turn. All right, and here's the driver that'll be challenging Greaves here, and is probably the favorite last year's champ. How did he get it done last year? Here's Bryce Menzies. 2015, I would say, was pretty much perfect every round that I went out. You have to be so precise with your truck. If you overdrive it, one small mistake, you're done. You know, it's single elimination. And Menzies is really staking a claim to this that he could be the driver to beat today at Frozen Rush. Bryce Menzies, strong in qualifying and strong here in the first round. He's going to advance. And shot out of the cannon. Bryce Menzies is going to walk off with it. No real challenge for McCachron. I never get too hyped up in the truck or overdrive it. I'm always on the conservative side because those little small mistakes end up huge at the finish line. Here we go, the finals at Red Bull Frozen Rush. Johnson trying to find Bryce Menzies in the distance. Here is your leader in the number seven. A perfect drive on all six laps, and Bryce Menzies wins Frozen Rush 2015. You know, he was the king of the mountain the first time I'm the king of the mountain now. Everybody wants to take me down, so I would love to see me and RJ go back at it again. And as Tina had mentioned at the top of this show, it's interesting, the truck that Bryce Menzies is driving, that's the one Rick Johnson won two years ago in. Then Bryce took it last year and won. The truck itself is actually undefeated. We'll see if Johnny Greaves is in that red lane in the uh, black truck, see if he can knock him off. First round upset, this would be huge. And they pick lane choice by a coin toss, and uh, Bryce Menzies chose that right lane or the blue lane to the outside, which means he's gonna streak up in a more of a direct line to start. Uh, Johnny's gonna have to go to that left lane through that first small chicane. So interesting choice, and let's not forget, Johnny's also running that manual transmission, only he and Rob Mack, and it's been a little tough for them to start. They seem to dig down a little bit more than the automatics. 
a little bit smaller displacement engine and a lighter truck uh, for Greaves. And you'll hear that thing rev, especially with that manual transmission. You'll just sound, and that's the hesitation off the line. And that's going to allow a big hole shot for Bryce Menzies. But Johnny told me that he was going to try to go a little slow, a little soft off the start, so he didn't dig too much. And it looked like it caught him off just a bit with the icy conditions still here as Bryce got a great jump. And here's Bryce setting up between the two icebergs. It goes very far inside, got up on that ledge, and a nice over-under shot as we now see Johnny go into the top part of the course, that upper bowl, and he throws it around with a lot of confidence. Trying to make up time after that hesitation off the line, down through the slalom. Oh, Greaves looks big! Oh! He's able to reel it back in. I mean, he really got up on top there. It looked like a nice 50-50 grind if you were skateboarding. Yeah. And so that didn't cost him a lot of time, but definitely cost him some time. And it seems to me it's a tough with the split, so to speak, the different lanes. But it really seems to me Bryce has a huge advantage at, the, at this point. Yeah, that little mistake again there from Grace. Meanwhile, Bryce Menzies is on board with him. Has been nothing but smooth throughout his run through the first lane. Now he's into the second lane and looks just as good. Absolutely, let's watch him do the chicane. Now, when I talked to Bryce, he said he overdrove qualifying. He was going to calm it down. He was going to try to be much smoother in the racing. And it really looks like he has done just that as he gets kicked <laughs> just a bit. But again, the track's going to deteriorate. There's going to be more kicking in the trucks, especially in that chicane area. Yeah, for these drivers, that's that's nothing. That's that's practically going straight. Johnny Green's running out of time. We're in the last corner. He's digging, but Bryce Menzies has got the lead and uh, time running out in this four lap race. Wow. He's starting to close up, I think, a little bit. It, he does look like he's closing up a bit. Now, four laps to do. Oh, and oh, Bryce goes way out yeah. into the loan. That's going to cost him a little bit of time as it sucked the life out of the truck, just like it does when you get out into the soft stuff in the dirt. Getting into the soft part of that snow is going gonna, is gonna to bring it down just a little bit. Down through the ski slalom goes Greaves into the final corner. Solid lead for Bryce Menzies, keeping it in control. Yes, a big difference from what we saw from yesterday in qualifying where he was aggressive right out of the hole and made a whole bunch of mistakes. He has been nearly perfect throughout this first round run. And Bryce just, I mean, he's just not, you don't see a lot of input in the wheel. He's being very conservative. He's, He's been very precise as he goes into this top turn. Wow, Apex is a very tight, nice. Backs it in, rotates along the bottom, uh, using less race course and keeping a very smooth line as you get a good overview of the chicane. He has quite a comfortable lead. This will be the last time into that bull turn at the bottom, so Bryce can be conservative and smooth and get it to the finish line, and he has this win right at his grasp. I think you saw one last mistake from Greaves trying to get through that over-under jump as quickly as possible. He's hustling, but it's not going to happen. Bryce Menzies wins his first round matchup against Johnny Greaves, and the defending champion is going to the semifinals. Greaves is never able to quite make up from the hesitation off the line, and everyone with those manual transmissions knew that that would potentially be an issue. You give it too much gas, you just dig down. You don't give it enough, the truck either bogs or even stalls. We'll talk more about that as we go. Let's take a look at some of this race between these two drivers. Let's take a look. Here's the over-under, and as we saw, it's a tricky place to go racing. Take a look here, rotating in, you have to go between what I call the two icebergs. You have to be really precise, and it takes a bit of a checkup because you can't really drift it around. It seems like the iceberg on the outside is placed in a very tough position. You see Bryce go to the inside near the trees, but he still has to navigate around that outside or that landing jump. Cameron, you said it, Bryce, after the qualifiers. You told me you wanted to calm down and don't overdrive. Do you think you did that with that race? Yeah, that's why I was sitting there at the start line, just making sure that I was calming myself down and make sure I made no mistakes. I went up against Johnny Greaves, one of the best Pro 4 drivers there is, and he messed up in qualifying, so we didn't really know his speed. So I was going all out just to make sure, and you never know every single lap you're coming down the hill. Am I, am I in front? Am I behind? And uh, you're just working at the wheel the whole time. So I'm just glad to make it through the first heat. A little bit of pressure is off, and uh, on to the next one. You know, you did have a relatively solid lead over Johnny Greaves, but you'd mentioned that you didn't know where you were. What are you telling yourself, when, especially when you're coming into that final turn? Yeah, I mean, you can't really tell until you come down the second lap where we're supposed to come together. And I just didn't see anybody next to me, so I, I knew I was in front of him. But uh, you can never give up. You know, you never know if you're going to make a mistake, lose time. So this event is just, it's so wild. You have to give it all you got, because if you go out, you're done. 
So uh, on to the next round, and uh, our goal is to make it to the final. Well, what a great start, Bryce. All right, our next matchup to the veterans, Scott Douglas up against Rob McCachran. These guys are respected, actually, not just as drivers, but for what they can do as far as tuning the trucks. In fact, Douglas building trucks for several of the drivers is really a master fabricator as well. Scott Douglas, 54 years of age. It's our oldest competitor. Douglas Motorsport started in California, and then we started racing Midwest races. And now our main shop is near Green Bay, Wisconsin, a little town called Bondwell. Douglas will not take the lead. We came out um, last year with three trucks to this event. Because it's not a points race, I've been able to go way outside the box of what I can do with my company. Uh, instead of just racing myself and having a backup truck, I can have other trucks in the event and we can try different setups. So, hard, too light, or? Probably. When I lease trucks out uh, or have other people drive my trucks, I want to give them every bit as good a truck as I have. Do you have a good feel in the truck? They have no it's a victory for Douglas Motorsports. It's a victory for the way we build our trucks and everything. Let's do it. I was standing there watching the, the first run with Ricky, and then I go, yeah, if I see you out of the corner of my eye, I'm not lifting. He goes, dude, that's your truck. I go, I can fix it. <laughs> you know, if I got to fix both of them, what? I want the win. W's worth way more. Here's Rob McCachran. Really hard to explain just how decorated a champion this guy is in off-road racing, going back to the 1980s and then a champion to the 90s, and then really hitting his stride over the last, let's say, 15 years or so. Well, I mean, taking a look at the results, and uh, there you have the ball 1000 from 2007. You, you move forward. Let's keep looking at these. Are Rob McCachran on top again for the ball 1000. Switch it again. Let's look at another graphic. Again, Rob McCachran right on top. I mean. Yeah, there's something that's consistent here. Go ahead, keep going, keep going. I mean, it's all <laughs> Rob McCarron. Yeah, he is on top, and he, you know, he wins in everything he does. He hasn't won here at Frozen Rush, though. Mm, he wants that one bad. I bet you came close last year. Being born and raised in Las Vegas, um, you know, I was growing up in the desert, so I am a fish out of water in, in the snow. Um, I started out when I was 16 years old racing dune buggies for five or six years, and then got involved in trucks and. You know, once I got involved in racing off-road trucks and stadiums and Baja 1000 type stuff, uh, you know, I fell in love with it and pretty much made it my career. We are seconds away from the first green flag. Now the clock is running. One thing that I learned last year is that the early in qualifying, the snow had great grip, but uh, in my second heat, fluffy and ruddy and a lot like the desert and the short course racing that we do and it becomes difficult to work with. Very powdery through this corner here. Experience definitely helps and, um, and this is this is my living. I eat, dream and sleep this and I want to beat the best. Um, you know this is a bucket list thing and you know we all want those special trophies and having the Red Bull Frozen Rush trophy on my uh, mantle at home would be awesome. Ready to go racing now. So Rob McCachran's journey to try to finally get that Frozen Rush trophy begins here in round one against a very formidable Scott Douglas. So right now what we're looking at, Rob McCachran is the other driver that has that manual shift. He's on the inside or the left lane. He was third here a year ago. He's the sixth qualifier. Scott Douglas was the third qualifier and had line choice, and he went with the right. jump for Douglas. We talked about that transmission from McCaffrey, something he was definitely worried about. Yeah, the manual transmission is good in some sections, but definitely a disadvantage off the start. And Scott Douglas taking advantage of that. Rob actually to make up time to hit the cross. 
crossover jump, very similar to where we were with Menzies and Johnny Green from the previous race. Now Rob Mack and Bryce Menzies both oh, told me McEachern. no mistakes. I was just going to set Same it up, one. no mistakes, and that was a huge mistake. Not only did he over-rotate, but it looked like he snubbed the motor. It looked like he had to refire the truck. That or he just couldn't quite get the gear shift that he wanted. So he, that was a huge problem for McCachron, and that's going to put him way behind the eight ball because Scott Douglas, his, he has a spotter. His spotter is telling him what has happened. So now Douglas knows, I still need to be quick, but no mistakes. That is the key. All right, so does have some time to work with, though, in a four-lap race. We have not gotten to the halfway point. First time we've seen Douglas hang this left-hand section of corners. Nice yeah, outside yeah. burn blast. I mean, exploded. If you were surfing, that was a huge fan spray. And see how Douglas is being calm, cool, collected, not overdriving. Breaks traction a little bit there, but that's something to be expected with these conditions. But Douglas keeping it smooth and keeping on the gas. You can see the lead he has over McCachron at this point. Well, let's see McCachron completely uncorked here. Can he make up ground? He is up against the ropes after that spin out on lap one. And Scott Douglas, a veteran, knows exactly what to do when he has the lead. Now, last year, Douglas actually crashed in that corner, that left-hander at the top of the mountain. So this year he's going to try to back it down just a little bit. And that's the perfect recipe when you have a lead. Beautiful entry in this corner through the crossover. Wow, it has gotten really loose. Only oh, clips that inside iceberg just a little bit, but has a massive lead here. So Douglas basically cruising on to the win. As long as he doesn't make a mistake, this is going to be his race. This is the most pivotal corner of all the last oh, 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 Douglas! Oh. Douglas hits the wall and rolls! He had the lead! It appeared it was his race to win! And he can put it in reverse and get going, possibly. We don't know the condition. Obviously, we're hoping that Scott is okay. Whoa. I believe that's our first full tumble we've seen in Frozen Rush. Here comes McCachron. Surely the spotter was told McCachron to just slow down and be cautious through there. Now, that wall caught a couple of trucks yesterday, but nothing like that. Wow. So a, a big crash for Douglas. We are hoping that everything is okay inside the truck and crashing is a part of racing and these trucks are set up with obviously the roll cages, uh, the, the seat, the safety containment, uh, the straps. So the checkered flag has come out. Douglas not able to continue. So they have called that the victory will go to McCachron. And we do see some movement inside the cab there. We hope that Scott Douglas is okay. Now, he had the lead right off the start, and we're going to show you how Douglas was able to establish the early advantage over this man, Rob McCachron, who will end up actually getting the victory now. And you had talked about that manual transmission versus the automatic off the line, and once again, the automatic, as expected, has a big advantage for Douglas. Well, just the torque converter uh, cushions that acceleration and uh, gets the traction in there, and just a huge jump. And Rob said, unlike uh, Johnny, who told me he was going to start in first gear, Rob Max said he was going to start in second to try to make it a little bit more cush so he's not breaking that traction so abruptly. But then he broke traction too much through here. Not sure what happened. And and see, he had to refire. Yes. You see the exhaust come flying out. And this is the pivotal moment. I was just saying, Scott Douglas has this in the bag. He's just got to be cool, calm, and collected. He goes off the big jump at the bottom. Now watch, he sets up here. It's a two-part turn and almost looked like he went in too late and he got into the wall. Now, something else to take into consideration is that we got some cloud cover and it has changed the lighting conditions. Mm. It might have been hard for him to see the definition of where that wall was, and that is a huge tumble for Douglas. Ooh. Yeah, you can see that's not just a snowbank. There are actually concrete barriers behind that, and Douglas has not only fired the truck up, he's potentially ready to drive back to the pits here, so I would assume then that he's okay. Good to see. The veteran driver, and no worse for wear, although he's going to be bummed as far as pride goes. He apparently would have had that victory had he had just been able to keep it on four wheels, but it's not easy to do on a track like this. Well, after such an exciting race, I thought it would be a great idea to talk to Rob McCachron, so let's get Rob Mack on the headset. And Rob, I want to ask, first of all, you snubbed the motor as you went into that upper turn in between the two icebergs, as I like to call them. You had to refire, but I think this is a great example of never surrendering. I mean, you never give up because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, it could have just been a spin out. Unfortunately, a big crash for uh, Scott, but he's okay. But the course conditions seem very tough. 
Well, they are, Cameron. They're getting tougher and tougher. And, uh, you know, with the weather being warmer than normal, um, the track's going to get rutted up. It's going to be uh, probably a little bit of desert, a little bit of Ball 1000 out here. We've been pretty success successful in the desert, winning the Ball 1000 the last two years. But you're right, uh, up there in the top turn, I, uh, I went in there, I stubbed the motor. I tried to get around the corner in third gear, and that didn't quite work out. So I learned my lesson. Uh, luckily for me, you know, we had Scott Douglas go out, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we can clean everything up in the next round. Um, with this Rockstar Energy Makita Tools truck. The BF Gooders tires are awesome. It's incredible how good they hook up here in the snow and the Vision Off-Road guys with the wheels, um, thank you guys too. But what a what a great event to be able to come out here in the snow and run 900 horsepower trucks. Um, wish you were out here with us, Cameron. Yeah, I wish I was out there as well, but I'm here doing the interviews and uh, talking about the racing. And I think Rob has learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that's gonna be interesting, will the lighting stay the same? Is it gonna stay this kind of cloudy cover or will we get that bright sunshine, which is gonna play havoc with the vision setup of the drivers out there? Yeah, it is, you know, and that, that's weird. It was bright and sunny, I think, when our ra my race started. Now I'm looking, it's full overcast. So I think that's what we were gonna have. We were gonna have sun in the morning and then uh, we were gonna have overcast the rest of the day. We do need um, this track to stay hard and the colder it is, the snow will ice up and that gives uh, these BF Gooders tires with 700 spikes in each one better traction. So I think as all the drivers are hoping, we get a, we get a good hard track. So if the temperatures stay cool, sun stays off it, I think it'll help uh, with the track conditions. Awesome. All right, good luck, Rob Mack. We'll see you in the semis. Thank you. All right. So the uh, journey continues to try to get that first ever Frozen Rush trophy. And to do it, these drivers have to dial in not only their own technique and their machines, but one very critical piece of equipment. Here's Tina with more on that. Yeah, Jason, take a look at this bad boy next to me. This is what a tire looks like with over 700 spikes on it, if you were ever curious. I can touch them. You definitely don't want to sleep on these spikes. Um, they do give the drivers the traction they need, especially in this kind of snow. But, Jason, a lot of work, a lot of engineering went into this design. I know you have more. Out here, without four-wheel drive, there's no traction. And without traction, there's no speed. So when it came time to construct a tire capable of taking on Sunday River, BF Goodrich went to a country that knows winter driving. Normal small cars, you have the winter tire with about 100 spikes, and here you have nearly 700 spikes. The tire arrives, uh, we do the grooving according to the sketch which the BF Goodrich uh, engineers has uh, developed to make the, the, the pattern more aggressive. And when you have this kind of deep snow and the loose surfaces, you have to clean the tire to have a continuously good grip. Uh, then we drill the holes to position the studs. Uh, we glue each hole to combine uh, the, the metal and the rubber in a good way. And then we put a stud. 35 by 12 and a half inches, a soft racing specific compound. No siping and no frills. Traction delivered by 700 studs per tire. All designed to race in a place where roadside assistance is simply not an option. Okay, top of the boy road, make sure you keep both of your trucks there, please. Okay, race stick, stand by. Next matchup, we've got Chad Horde will be taking on Carl Renizetter. And uh, Horde, well, he has a little more experience, maybe not driving a race truck on snow, but being in snow and driving a regular truck on it in general, because he is from cold temperatures in the California guys. Warm welcome, Chad Horde. He is from Michigan, so at least he has experience hanging out in cold temperatures. Hopefully them guys, you know, they'll be all bundled up and get cold or something, and it'll just be normal for me and go put the pedal down. Anybody can go fast in a straight line. Going through these turns fast, and then on the areas of the track where we do start getting door to door, that's also my style of racing. I've grown up on the Northwoods driving on roads with a truck half a mile up in front of me with the snow and mist coming. It's what we do, I see it all the time. You know, me going as fast as I can on that track, and oh my gosh, here comes a snow cloud, I gotta back out of it. But I'm not backing out of it. 
I don't come from a fairy tale story of a wealthy family or nothing. I have a logging and excavating business. I have an incredible crew and an incredible team. So this weather out here isn't gonna affect my guys. This is what we do. We work hard and I think that's what's gonna win this race. So here's Carl Renizetter who will be taking on Chad Horde here. He's one of the veterans, has won plenty of races and titles in his own right. And he, like most of the drivers, will tell you the jumps look spectacular, but the races are really won and lost in the corners. Absolutely. Let's take a look at 2015. This is a look at Chad Horde. He's coming down to attack that bottom bowl turn. And this, this corner is very similar this year. Now watch Chad. He goes in and he apexes across the bottom, but he finds himself drifting to the outside. He's pushed too far. Stop it right here. Okay, what you see is up against the berm, that's scrubbing speed. His direction is going out towards the berm, that's also scrubbing speed, and he's having to turn into it harder, which is also scrubbing speed. Let's take a look at Carl Renazetter. This is gonna be a textbook look. Let's watch him. This is poetry in motion as he drifts the corner, he sets it up, apexes cleanly, and runs smoothly out of it. Look at all the speed he carries out of it. Let's look at it one more time. I wanna stop it here. Okay, go ahead and stop it right about here. He's in the apex, he's carrying his speed, now look at the trajectory. The tires are pointed straight. That's not scrubbing speed. He's drifting it perfectly. He's going to be able to carry more momentum as he comes out of that turn. It looks so good on the exit of the turn, but a lot of that is set up at the beginning. And when you're talking about a guy that has 118 short course wins, he knows how to set up a turn. The nighttime rain driving you in. How fast you want to come in to the corner and where your apex is going to be, it will determine where you come out of the corner. So uh, if you want to keep the corner tight, you know, you want to rail the outside of the corner, it, your breaking point will be at different places depending on what line you take. So these things, you need to drive them, you need to drive them hard. You kind of need to drive them like you're pissed off a little bit. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. I've realized that it's easier to determine where that breaking point is when you're racing head to head with somebody because you can visually see where they're breaking and I know I can go deeper. They are side by side. Renazetta with a slight oh! advantage. Renazetta takes it. We knew it would be door to door, but I didn't know it would literally be door to door. And that final corner right there paid off. That was last year, battling it out with a Todd LaDuke, and he used that corner to make the pass. See if he can do it against Horde. Here's an interesting fact as we look at the matchup. Renazetta had the choice of lanes. He's the only driver in the quarterfinals or in this round that chose to go left lane. And uh, that's an interesting fact. We'll see if that plays into it. Good look Ron at Renazetter in the yeah. office. And they're ready to go racing. Chad Hoare against Carl Renazetter here in the quarterfinals. I believe the car is sideways. They're about to unleash his 900 horsepower trucks. Horde with a bit of a jump. And he'll go to that outside straight lane, the blue lane, Renazetta to the left. And if we're talking about who has the freshest racing recently, Carl Renazetta most recently was racing and won the Lucas Oil Challenge Cup. So that is a huge win at the end of the season. That was back in October. So none of these drivers have raced since October. Okay, so the last time anyone raced, the winner of the race was Carl Renazetta. Let's see if he can carry that forward. Oh, oh. mistake. And I yep. should uh, preface raced short course because there has been the Baja 1000 and desert races, but Carl makes a mistake at the top of the course and he's trying to be calculated down through that chicane there, trying to not set a wheel out, trying not to panic about making that mistake because frankly, anybody can make a mistake at any time. All right, so Chad Horn, the man from Michigan, leads at the end of the first lap. Now, he did have the shorter track, but in addition, the lead's extra large because of the mistake from Renazetta, who's really going to have to hustle now as we're on lap two of four in this quarterfinal. And Hort told me he didn't have a great season, but with that new equipment, the new truck, he was able to get to the podium a couple times. They battled transmission problems and torque converter problems, and the torque converter really the magic part of some of the setup here with getting to the power to the ground. And look at how close they are. Oh. Here's Renazetta as they come together. They're gonna come to this bowl turn very much almost side by side. Here comes Renazetta from behind. Now remember, he said in that piece, he likes to be able to outbreak his competitor. He's gonna enter on the inside here to the left of Horn. He gets right up against the door, but then a complete face full of snow, courtesy of that number nine truck. So Renazetta at least has told Chad Horn, I'm there, I'm putting the pressure on, but making a pass 
Well, here's his opportunity. The course is just split, so he might be able to get by him the next time when they come together. That'll tell the story. Uh, Ren is at a driving a truck that he hasn't raced. Oh, and oh, Ward, Ward with a big mistake going between the icebergs. He carried too much momentum out into that soft snow, and it's, it took him to the outside. So and now Renizator cleaned up that corner at the top big time. So this could be everything that uh, Carl Renizator needed. A little mistake from Horde, a clean run for him. They're going to come back together just a couple hundred feet to see who has the advantage. Oh, oh. <laughs> stepping out for Renizator. Big lead for him. Not sure if there was another mistake for Horde, but now they're not even in the same shot. So a come from behind effort. Here they go. And we'll see what happens here as, as they come back together. This time it will be a better delineation with, with them now having done both courses the second time. Now Carl Renazetter has never raced this truck before. And in fact, the front and rear end has been cut off of this truck that was originally built in 2008. Renazetter has the advantage here. Hard with the mistake there at the top, so it looks like it's going to be Renazetter. But anyway, Whoa, Renaz big kicks. Renazetter only has 15 minutes of time inside this truck at this setup, according to his crew. So Horde got through the uh, to the white flag first, but he had to take a longer lane around the last time. So the estimate was the lead was Renazetter's, and it is Horde really sliding in there hard to try to make up ground. He closes in, but it's too little, too late, and Carl Renazetter takes the victory. That was good heads up racing. They each had their strengths and weaknesses throughout those four laps. Definitely, and the mistakes play into it so much. Let's take a look at where the mistakes happen or what actually happened. This is the upper bowl. So this is the top of the course here at Sunday River. And this is a tough one. Watch Carl sets up, throws it in, gets into some of that soft. Now he goes, he gets, I think what happens is he got into the soft and it pulled him to the outside and he had to re he had to correct, he had to bring himself back in, but good job not panicking and just jumping into the throttle and getting crazy. He kept it calculated and how great is this one? Woo! Yeah, wheel to wheel and again, all that snow dust. Good job by uh, Renizator to kind of shrug that off and stay close enough to then execute the pass. And then we talked about mistakes being made. Here's Horde, he went too wide, goes out into the soft and has to recorrect to get in between the two, the takeoff and the landing or the dual icebergs there. And the finish line, of course, it was relatively close, but Carl Renazetter is going to move on into the semifinals. Essentially, this one boiled down to the battle of who made the least amount of mistakes. That ended up being Carl Renazetter, and he is down with Tina. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, that was some great head-to-head -head racing. Carl, where do you think you were the most effective out there? I would have to say definitely the second lap. I made a few mistakes on the first lap, and I had to push, but I also had to be clean. So I just focused on doing my lines, and uh, I think I ran out of gear just a little bit there at the end, uh, coming down the straightaway. But uh, I hit a couple good turns up on top. I think we need to do a little carburation work before the next race, but uh, I think we're, we're, we're po poised pretty well. And uh, man, that was close. I was behind at the, coming into the last two laps, so had to make it up. Well, you will be moving on to the semifinals. And Carl, it's always fun to watch you make those turns there in the bowl, guys. Yeah. Woo. All right, so Renazetter eliminates Chad Horde. So uh, let's update the bracket. We already have a classic matchup set. We will have Bryce Menzies against Rob Mack in the next round. Who will face Carl Renazetter? Will it be Ricky Johnson or will it be? CJ Greaves? Well, if you're asking me to prognosticate, I kind of have to go with Ricky Johnson, who's already won this event, the fast qualifier. But hey, that's why we race, because you really don't know until it's happened. Well, this kid's been learning quite quickly. He cannot count out the 20-year-old. And how does he learn so quick? Let's find out. Nature versus nurture. When you grow up the son of a racing legend like C.J. Greaves did, Greaves this question becomes even more complex. Yeah, I mean, I've been at the short course track since I was in a diaper. When he first started racing and winning on four wheels at the age of 14, to this year at the ripe old age of 20, the younger Greaves has kept the off-road pundits wondering whether a person's development is determined by his DNA or is it influenced by the environment he lives in? His dad, Johnny, apparently doesn't care either way. We race each other hard, but we're not gonna bang each other's fenders off, because at the end of the day, 
the money's coming out of the same pocket no matter what. To put it lightly, 2015 has been kind to C.J. Graves. To put it heavily, he accomplished something that no other driver has ever done, winning both the Pro 2 and the Pro 4 titles in the same season. With nine wins in Pro 4 and six in Pro 2, it was just, it was unbelievable all year. So the kid can drive on dirt. The checkered flag for C.J. Graves. Here in Sunday River, we're about to see if he can do it on snow. Here's who CJ Greaves has to try to take down, none other than the Rick Johnson, who is a seven-time champion in motocross and supercross, and then transitioned quite well, actually did some NASCAR, and has been an ace in trucks, be it short course, on snow, or even in the Baja 1000. You name it, Rick Johnson's a racer, he can do it. Not only that, he's done a great job as a commentator, so you really can't <laughs> count him out in anything he does in life, and I wouldn't count him out here for sure. Uh, like I said, I believe he's the favorite coming in, your fast qualifier, and we'll see though, because CJ had a great run, and the other thing to think about is CJ's already seen the course today mm -hmm. because of the last chance qualifier against Anderson, so that might be a bit of an advantage. The uh, Greaves boys, both uh, the son, CJ, and dad, Johnny, did have some issues yesterday. Johnny was a lot quicker, and CJ looked a lot quicker when they actually raced today. So remember Bryce Menzies said when he raced Johnny Greaves, we didn't know what to expect from him. That's probably the position Ricky Johnson is in. On this course, it's different. He hasn't seen it yet. Greaves looked much better this morning. So this could be an upset in the making. Man, Ricky Johnson would be very disappointed if that happens. But one other thing we need to throw out here, Ricky Johnson has not actually raced an off-road truck since this event last year. He did not have a ride throughout the 2015 season, so we'll see if there's any rust on him as well. Absolutely. He's had just a couple laps here as well, so let's find out what he has. So here it is, Ricky Johnson against uh, C.J. Greaves. These two, not strangers to each other. There were some great rivalry battles between uh, R.J. and C.J.'s dad, Johnny, uh, back in the day, a couple of years ago in uh, Pro 4 racing. So these two guys know each other well. We'll see if the 20-year-old can pull off the upset on the 51-year-old multi-time champion of both motocross, supercross, and off-road truck racing, Rick Johnson. This is a veteran against one of the up-and-coming stars of the sport. Slight advantage to Johnson, who will have the blue lane. That's the short line. So he'll have the early edge. We'll see if CJ can keep up. And you see him throw it into the turn. Now here where we see Ricky on the right. This is where we saw Horde make the mistake, get out into the soft snow. But Ricky tucks it in. He, he has to really calculate. It almost looked like he went a little wide in the turn. But he has to be careful not to make a mistake. CJ doing the same. He has to make a double turn there. You see how he had to return into it. Every time that happens, if you can't make it in one fluid motion, you're costing yourself time. Downhill through the slalom comes CJ Greaves. Now he's not gonna have the advantage on Rick Johnson now because again, Johnson had the short lane, but the idea is to try to at least keep him in sight. Johnson's already headed off to lap two on the long line now. The red line is the much longer distance. So far so good though for the 2014 champ of Frozen Rush. And we'll take a look as RJ goes to the top. We'll, we'll watch how he takes on that top bull turn. Here he is in that top bull turn, sets it up. Wow, wow, wow look <laughs> at that. That was beautiful. So great setup. He nailed it. Great execution where we saw CJ make a double turn there. And look at RJ looking smooth through that section. But Ricky just doesn't have that big of an advantage. No. Yes, he's got about eight truck lengths, but that is not a huge advantage. One small mistake, and that is totally gone. Absolutely, CJ Greaves has stepped up big time from where he was in practice and in qualifying the last two days, but that's to be expected since he's never raced this event before. He is learning quickly, and he's giving Rick Johnson all he can handle. As we talked about, Ricky hasn't raced this year in the Pro 4, hasn't raced short course. Conversely, CJ is the Pro 4 champion from the Torque Series, and uh, that's a Midwest or uh, East Coast style uh, series and uh, he has been great at that uh, taking his dad down and, and you see him he made it in one fluid motion but he did check up quite a bit where he slowed down uh, quite a bit more than what ricky johnson did and you see him working aggressively through that chicane section every lap cj green seems to get quicker around this course here at sunday river and we'll see the tail of the tape in a moment Johnson still has the lead, but remember, Johnson has to take the longer lane on this final lap. Can Greaves close it up? Can he put some pressure? The man who's running 48, saluting his uh, good friend from NASCAR, Jimmy Johnson. 
Ricky was uh, one of the first people to get in the ear of Jimmy Johnson and help him out as an aspiring car driver. Now Ricky paying some respect back to him. Nice turn. Yeah. Nicely done by Ricky. He's got to be cleaning the chicane. He had to check the brakes there. You see, he had to check up just a little bit. So let's see how close it is. Oh, Grease. this is close. Grease has to lead. Now Johnson has a little bit of run downhill. Oh, Grease gets sideways and Johnson passes him back. So you said it. Ricky had the run. Now he's got to control this turn. Now the problem for CJ is he's in that snow dust. He can't see, but he's got the inside trying to make the run. He doesn't the care. If he can't see or not, he's got the foot to the floorboard, but Johnson is just going to edge him out. What a Woo battle. Woo Woo. Yes. Well, CJ Greaves eliminated, but he has nothing to be ashamed of there. He closed the gap on Rick Johnson in the second half of that race and actually had the lead momentarily. The way the lanes work out, though, Johnson had that big charge coming down the hill and was able to get back to the number one spot. CJ Crease, what a race. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Wow. Whew. Thank goodness for uh, being able to re-look at it because there is so much excitement. Here's Ricky at the top. Bolton. Superb well, I right mean, here. Uh, first lap, he nailed that. I mean, he even risked it a little bit by throwing the rear of the truck around just a little bit more than maybe he should have, but he nailed it exactly perfect. And this is the mistake for, by CJ as they are coming down into that final turn. And CJ made a great job. Watch how CJ sets this up. He runs in behind, he goes a little wide. Now watch him tuck to the inside. CJ tries to go outside in and mm. almost, I mean, look at the run that he had. But Ricky's able to edge him out. Yeah, he needed to find some daylight in an opening and he made one. Tech driving at the top by Ricky. He had to run it hard on the throttle in that uh, Douglas Motorsports built truck. And wow, uh, I mean, really, Ricky put it all together there. And after not racing all season long, I guess uh, he's not too rusty. No, that was amazing that he's able to pick it up that quickly. Rick Johnson wins in a close one against CJ Greaves. Tina? Thanks, Jason. Ricky Johnson just barely getting the best of the young CJ Greaves. Did you even know what to expect from CJ? Well, he didn't really get a chance to show what he had yesterday and uh, today he went he went faster than me in the, in the opening heat race and so I knew I was going to have my hands full. He's the defending Pro 4 champion in Torque and it's awesome to, to race against him and, and to beat him it is, says a lot, to, you know, means a lot to me. You know, I just want to really thank the guys from Rebel that put me back in and believed in me for one more time in Frozen Rush, Helmet, Colby, Michael, uh, everybody, Jenner and uh, Regis, everybody and uh, Josh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It is just awesome. The method to the madness is change your wheels and you're going to win. And watching you guys on that final turn, that was spectacular. Walk us through that. Well, coming down, my spotter had me covered. He said, okay, if, you, if you're if you clean down the hill, you should have him covered. And when, as soon as we came together, he says, you got him clear, but hold your lane. And then when I came down in, I was pretty conservative, and that allows CJ to run the outside and get a slingshot. But I felt it was much better than opening up the inside and, and being door. Not that he's a dirty driver, but hey, it's one and done. So I knew he would go for the inside, so I just protected the inside. And he came up, and I could hear him, so I was just trying to push the throttle through the floor. So, woo! What a fun race to watch, Ricky. Congratulations, Jason. Well, you can tell Ricky Johnson is very happy to be back behind the wheel of one of these off-road race trucks. He wasn't sure a year ago if he would be back this year. And then as it turns out, we didn't know if he'd be able to do this event. It's been so warm. we got these guys behind us talking about wearing T-shirts and riding motorcycles on Christmas Day in New England. It's been so warm in the Northeast. Amazing work by the folks here at Sunday River to get this track and get this snow and get it together. Thank you for calling Sunder River Snow Phone. This is Sarah with your mountain report for Monday, November 16th. Mother Nature threw us a curveball. That mercury never dropped, but baby, we're still open. It was a wild idea to try and make this happen. We had a big fight with the weather. In the middle of December, I started looking at the weather and realized it wasn't very cold and there wasn't very much snow. I made a call to Peter and asked him, uh, you know, is this going to happen? Is there going to be a racetrack when we get there? It's December 15th. Mother Nature did her best to snow on us last night, but the thermostat was set just a little high. Kept paying attention to the weather and and, uh, and knew they were making snow here and just went with it and said, OK, we're going. It's going to happen. Uh, inside the Snowflake factory is where all the horsepower is. Uh, we have nine compressors that, may, that can compress 54,000 cubic feet of air per minute. It's one of the world's largest snowmaking systems, over 8,000 gallons of water a minute. It's December 30th. We received 10 inches of fresh snow yesterday, but that doesn't stop our mountain operations team from doing what they do best. We pumped about 30 million gallons of water full bore 
24 hours a day. Seeing it get pulled off, you kind of look back and you're like, really never should have doubted him. These guys have worked their butts off this year. We were able to get it done. It's January 8th. It's a great day for truck racing and skiing. Over 50 trails with bright sun. Down to the final four now, semifinals. Cameron Steele, Jason Wygant here giving the call from Sunday River. And this is a matchup that we probably would have expected to see happen. Rob McCacker wants to win this thing badly. You got to go through the champion to do it. That's Bryce Menzies. See these two head to head, you know it's going to be a good race. Absolutely. I'm excited to see this as we look at the brackets. I mean, we have so much experience in this, and the only under 50 is Bryce Menzies. Yes. I mean, the other guys are just barely 50, but Bryce not yet 30. So youthful exuberance, does it overcome old age and treachery? I, you never know here. I, I kind of, you know, I would like to side with the older guys, but at this point, <laughs> I think that Bryce has the advantage. Yeah, he's certainly uh, experienced beyond his years behind the wheel of one of these Pro 4 trucks. Yeah, I mean, when you think of a, a Pro 4 truck, it, it's insane how much power they put to the ground of four tires, and it is like a wild animal. You're just holding on inside there, and I think that's one thing that helps me out is I, I could kind of almost calm it down a little bit, and I use my foot to do that. It's not much power um, to be precise with the truck, where, you know, other people, they just throw it in there and get right back to the gas, and when you when you point those things and you hit the gas, they're going to go exactly where you're pointing the steering wheel. So. You know, you got to be precise with these trucks, and if you overdrive them, it's so easy to make mistakes, so easy to get offline. I think that's one of the strong traits that I have is uh, just being smooth with the truck and, and actually more calm than just going all out with it. A little different than you would think from one of the younger drivers out here. Certainly, he is very patient, smooth, and methodical behind the wheel. Will it be enough to hold off the challenge from Rob Mack? A great start from McCachran using that manual transmission. He expected it to be a disadvantage, but he gets the early lead. Uh, that surprised me, and I think it probably surprised Rob, but he said he was going to go up a gear when it comes to the starts, and wow, he drops a lot of snow dust there for Bryce. Bryce never lifts. Remember, McCachran going to the shorter line. Oh, he makes a mistake. And he stalled again. Yes, he stalls the truck, has to refire, so made the mistake coming in stuck the front end and then stalled it as he's going for the shift. You remember, he has that manual transmission and uh, McCaffrey getting crazy on course right now, but he is trying to run it out where he would uh, try to get back to the advantage. Now, he is going to lead because he was on the shorter course, but he has a lot of work to do. Uh, if he's going to be on that long course that time around, when they get back together the next time, yeah. we'll see how close it really is or how close it isn't. Now, he's stalled it in each of his runs so far. That's the disadvantage of the manual. You might say, well, what's the advantage? He says as soon as he switched transmissions, 140 pounds less weight with the manual compared to his old automatic. And also, he has a six-speed transmission, closer ratios in the three-speed automatic, so he can keep that engine in the perfect RPM range to put the power to the ground. That's the good stuff. The bad stuff is there's a danger of stalling, and now he's got to try to make up time after that happened. And he said it's really tough shifting through that chicane section. I know you talked about, oh, McCaffrey sideways. He has to reel it back in. And you can see the advantage now that they both raced one track here. Bryce Menzies with a commanding lead as uh, you see the number seven now go to the red lane or the left lane, which is the shorter track. Remember, uh, he's got to negotiate that. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the longer track. He's got to negotiate that top bowl turn, which yeah. has gotten very soft, but Rob Mack with that tougher line between the two icebergs. Here's Menzies, perfect execution of that left hander oh, at the top. Man, did he really, he threw it in, he laid the throttle on perfectly, the acceleration looked great, I mean, not, not a wheel out of place there. And about as smooth as we've seen anyone go through these downhill moguls, the amount of kick that truck's getting is about as uh, small as you can expect. Look at McCacker, and meanwhile, in contrast, in the back, all over the place. Back on board with Menzies as he's headed toward the finish line. White flag is out. So he's just got to keep it under control. Now Scott Douglas was in this position a couple of races ago. We thought he had the victor over McCachran locked up, and he rolled the truck. So no leader is safe on a track like this. He's got a massive lead. He's going to the shorter track. So Bryce needs to just keep it clean. Obviously, Rob's going to push as hard as he can, but that's when you have a tendency to make mistakes. And you can see Bryce taking it a little bit more easy through the moguls, making sure he doesn't make that mistake as he goes into that bottom bowl turn for his final time here in the semifinal. No mistake, and he's got the checkers. And he hugs the inside, takes a little something off, doesn't need to push too hard. 
Bryce Menzies eliminates Rob McCachran and another smooth run. We have barely seen any errors out of Bryce Menzies throughout this race weekend. As for Rob McCachran, the speed was there and he managed to conquer the start with the manual transmission within a few other mistakes throughout the run. And you can see a pretty sizable gap back to him. And uh, that will end it. McCachran will have a shot though in a trophy race for third a little bit later on in the day. Let's take a look at the mistake from McCachran. Now he dives in, he's on the shorter line as he goes to the over under, he's on the outside. Now remember, he's trying to set up, watch as he goes in. Now right here, he hits a real soft spot, but he also re realizes he's going wide. So he tries to reel in, he stalls it, refires it. You see the exhaust blow out and he gets going again. Now let's take a look as he goes through the chicane in this section and watch this as he gets sideways. He has to reel it back in, has to check up all of that costing him time. And ultimately leads to a big win for Bryce Menzies, who's headed to the finals for the second year in a row. And remember that truck, as he and Ricky Johnson were saying, is the undisputed, undefeated champion of Frozen Rush. Whoever has raced in that truck at this event has won the event. And taking a look now at Menzies as he came out of that over-under, we saw how rough that can be, but he's just cruising. He's taking it easy. You still see a bit of a kick there. Can you imagine going wide open there, what kind Ooh. of kick there would be? So a lot of unpredictable situations as this track continues to break down. The ruts are starting to really become a factor, as are those bit of kicker jump from the trucks driving in and getting traction. Well, yesterday, some of the drivers telling us that they've actually increased the ride height of the trucks, anticipating how much deeper and bigger the bumps would be compared to qualifying and also racing last year. So Bryce Menzies moving on. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon. Jason, I think everyone is excited to see Bryce Menzies moving on to the finals, but you had to go through Rob Mack, who made a mistake. How aware were you of what was going on behind you? Yeah, I didn't know at the beginning. Uh, it was kind of like last run. I just went all or nothing. And I was the one that got to flip the coin for what line choice. And you always want to go right first. And I flipped and didn't get the right one. But, uh, you know, it worked out. So I'm just so pumped to make it to the finals again. And it, it's a lot of pressure to come back from 2015 from winning it and make it to the finals now. So now it's up to my teammate Ricky Johnson to do the same thing. And then we got to battle it again. And how is the course holding up at this point? You know, I thought it would have been a lot worse. But uh, the, the jumps coming down are really getting cupped out. So it's starting to starting to buck the trucks a lot more and you have to really think where you're going to go. So uh, this next round when we go six laps, it's going to be chaos, but I, I can't wait. I'm sure a lot of people looking forward to your finals. Guys, we'll send it back to you. So Bryce Menzies doing the job so far. He has made it to the finals to try to defend his championship from a year ago. It's now up to Carl Renazetter to try to stop the uh, Johnson Bryce Menzies uh, rematch in the finals. Well, I'm excited about this semifinal because I really think two legendary drivers, lots of talent. Carl had a, a very solid first run in the quarter. So I, this one is a very tough one to uh, predict who will come out of it. Carl Renners that are up against Rick Johnson. The two Red Bull trucks want to go to the finals. We'll see if Carl can stop them. As for RJ, it's the guy who's done it all, both on two wheels and four wheels, and including specifically, he's the man that started this event. He is no stranger to being number one. All right, here comes Ricky Johnson! I've raced Supercross, I've raced Motocross. I'm a fan of every kind of racing, whether it be Formula One, GTP, and then all of a sudden, the off-road truck started coming onto the scene. In this day and age, there's not that many things that you can say, I was the first one to do that anymore. You got a 900 horsepower snowblower with four blades, with thousands of teeth. You can't pass it up, man. Was, do, do you want to go? As I heard, do you? And I said, yes. It's going to be gross. The first ever Red Bull Frozen Rush goes to Ricky Johnson. Well, it's cold today. We're racing in the snow, but they're racing so hard, they can still catch the trucks on. And what you love about a battle like this, you get two drivers who know each other very well. They know the strengths and the weaknesses. Absolutely. I mean, two legends going head to head. I mean, uh, they've won so many different things. They've battled with each other. They know each other's propensities. And at this point, it, it's almost a toss up between the two at this 
Uh, you got to give Ricky the edge probably because of the fast qualifier and the fact he has the experience, but Carl is a never surrender kind of guy. Off the line, small edge for Johnson, but it does seem like that right lane has been opening itself up to hole shots regardless of who's in it. We know that Johnson will have the early lead because this is the short line as we're on board with him. Can Renazetter keep it close? One thing to look at here, Ricky going into that over-under, and a lot of people have had problems in there. Ricky negotiates it well, but you see just how rough it's gotten in that section. Renazetter up to the top, the big bolt turn, nicely done. Oh, he nailed that top turn. Great job by Renazetter as he heads down through the chicane. Ricky will have the lead, of course, with him having the shorter line, but when they come together one more time, we'll find out where they stack up. Remember, this is a four-lap race. Absolutely flawless for Renazetter down the hill as well, and perfect execution of that corner at the top. So looking good for the 17. Again, Johnson had the short line. Now that Johnson's into the longer lane, we'll see if he can maintain the lead. It's not going to be easy. Renazetter is charging hard. Nice look at Johnson up and over that jump as he heads into that top bull turn. We'll see how he executes. Looks nice and smooth from inside the truck. And here he goes through the chicane. Renazetter going on that inside line or that under. And he's going to come out behind wow. Ricky Johnson with the advantage as they head into that bottom bowl. It is close, though. Now, this is this uh, last corner that we were uh, showing earlier. Renazetter's technique through there. Can he use that to make up a little oh! bit? Oh! Into the wall, but he held on to it. He really threw that in hard. He was carrying a ton of speed and, and really committed into one big, beautiful turn. Oh, I hope to get another look at that after the race. But he has some time to make up against Johnson. We'll see how it plays out. Johnson back into that very tough under section. He checks up quite a bit. He goes through there a little bit slower, but a little more precise. Yeah, just trying to avoid the big mistake is Johnson. A little bit wider entry for Renazetter in that corner this time. It was good, but not quite as good as what he had on lap one. I'm charging down the hill. Still has some ground to make up. Oh, he breaks tracks just a little bit, steps out. Johnson with a big lead right now, but again, Johnson will now go into that longer line. And, and, and watching Ricky, he looks like he's, you know, really spot on. He looks a little more aggressive than Carl does, which surprised me a bit. I, I expected big aggression out of Carl, but again, it goes back to having to be precise. Everybody's been talking about not making mistakes, and so far, we haven't seen a mistake from either driver. Johnson in the big turn at the top. Again, smooth through there. This is the exact same truck he raced in this event last year. In fact, it was not raced at all since that race. So he's certainly familiar with Oh, and Renazetter. Oh! Renazetter stalls the truck or has a problem coming under the crossover jump, and, and that's going to end it. He's getting out, which would tell me that there's possibly, he, he thinks there's a fire or there might have been a fire on board. Ricky Johnson, the number 48, he is going to go to the final. He takes the checkers, and it will be Bryce Menzies and Ricky Johnson once again in the final. A rematch of 2015, and Carl's getting out of there. Well, if there's a fire, at least they can find some snow to pack on top of that. I don't see anything that would tell me that there was fire, no. but I'm, I'm expecting that something made him want to get out of the truck. As a driver, fire is the first thing, and another thing could be hot oil somewhere around if maybe he had a transmission explode. Trying to see if there's some fluid underneath the truck. I think there might be. Johnson uh, headed over, tried to get himself prepared for the finals. That would have been an interesting run. If Carl was able to get through that crossover jump clean, how much closer could he have been? He was right behind Johnson when they hooked up the previous time around. But we'll never know. Let's take a look at some of the action. And, uh, you know, really a, a great performance. This is the only place I really saw an issue. You see Ricky push through that snow drift, but he was on the right trajectory. He didn't go too wide, didn't get near the iceberg. And this is this is as close as it really got here after the first two laps. But look at Carl. I mean, <laughs> he threw it in. He had to make it a double turn. I, I couldn't see through the snow dust. I thought it was one beautiful turn. But man, did he risk a lot drifting it out towards that wall that took Scott Douglas out earlier. And this is how close it was halfway through this race. Only about a truck length and a half at one point through those moguls. So. Renazetter had a shot at it if he could make up just a little bit of ground for those final two laps. But unfortunately, the mechanical problems prevented him from getting there. And here's a look at Renazetter attacking into that under. And uh, we'll see if we can see anything that looks like fire or... Yes, if oh, you can there see it is. 
something happened there. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, a ball of fire coming out down by the exhaust. We'll see if there's fire inside the cab momentarily, uh, but that's definitely something uh, as a driver, you don't want to be anywhere near. So Renna Zetter having to get out of the truck or deciding to get out of the truck, but no visible fire after the fact. Tough break for the veteran out of California. There's Carl surveying the damage. And Rick Johnson has taken the victory, going to the finals again. He's with Tina. That's right, and Ricky Johnson will be going to the finals up against Bryce Menzies. And Ricky, you and Bryce have raced before. What do you need to do differently this time? The track is a lot rougher than it was last year, and it was it was really tore up at the end. Um, about bucked me over the bars. I watched the other guys, you know, swapping side to side. So. It's going to be uh, it's a combination of motocross, desert, a little bit of everything. But uh, I really want to thank the people from Red Bull and also from BFG. Pascal, the president or the, the guy in charge of racing, is here rather than Dakar. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, also, um, Ice, we've been here before. You beat me last year. I beat you the first year. So let's go get it, son. All right, there you go. It's going to be an exciting finals. Ricky Johnson and Bryce Menzies. Oh, it's cold today. We're racing in the snow but they're racing so hard, they can still catch the trucks on fire. Let's check it out with uh, Carl Renazetter. Absolutely, this is the scariest thing that can happen to a driver. Look at the fire inside the cab for Carl, and you can see right away he's pulling the wheel off, getting the net down, and he is gonna jump out of that truck. So it was a, a quick fire, but any fire is scary and no good. And uh, it's been all about the carnage. Let's get an update on that from Tina. Jason, right now I am with Scott Douglas, who we saw earlier hit the wall and go for a tumble. Scott, glad to see you up and walking, but what is your initial reaction when something like that happens? Well, obviously you're bummed, you know, and, and uh, you know, at the, at the Red Bull Frozen Rush uh, race here, it, it's just, it's all or nothing. And uh, the Amzo Borla exhaust truck was just on fire. I mean, we were just flying. And I actually had a lead, but I didn't realize it. And it's so hard for the spotters to figure that out. If we could ever figure that out, it'd be great because now I find out I had like a three second lead and I go and, and wad it up. I mean, but as a racer, you're always pushing, you're always pushing the envelope. And I just threw it in really hard. And, the, and I just, I threw it sideways. And when I picked up the throttle, the front end yanked over, it hit a rut or, or something was weird. And then it was going for the wall, and I thought, well, I could kiss the wall, maybe bounce off it and keep going. But when it hit the wall, it sucked it in, did a big flip, and landed. And, uh, and I thought we really tore up the truck bad because it was pretty violent. But I should have just tried to start it and keep going. Who knows what would have happened. But anyway, uh, just be happy to be part of this event. And um, got to thank you know, Red Bull for, for putting it on. Uh, it's awesome. And i got to thank all these fans out here, too, because uh, it's, it's crazy to have all these people out here in the snow and to be running out here. Thanks so much for speaking with us, Scott. Great to see you up here and walking and what a tumble, guys, but that's racing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the carnage, Scott Douglas eliminated him earlier. Also, Carl Renazetter, because of the fire in his truck, will not be able to make it back for a trophy race. So it is official. Rob McCachron is third once again this year at uh, Red Bull Frozen Rush. And the finals are set. Bryce Menzies, Ricky Johnson, a rematch from last year. I was born in the summer of 1987. 1987, I was Motocross Action Rider of the Year. We actually got to go to the White House to meet President Reagan. I think Bryce's feet hit the ground that year. <laughs> Retired from motocross in 1992. In 93, started racing uh, stadium trucks. 98, won my first short course championship in the core series and just kept it rolling from there. In 2003, I got my first Chevy Silverado. I took it out to the desert, hit a jump with it, and broke the truck, and my dad was screaming at me, but uh, you know, it kind of led me to this, the off-road world scene. In 2009, I went from driving a single buggy into the Pro 2 class and just getting a feel for it and getting comfortable with it. 2011, with my first Pro 4 championship, it was it was great to have this young kid named Bryce Menzies. I mean, I, I've known from the beginning when I first started with Bryce that he's a special talent. 2011 was the year I won my first Pro 2 cha championship, and the feeling was just so exciting. We both went out. He won the Pro 2 championship, and I won the Pro 4 championship for Menzies Motorsports and Red Bull. 2014 was my first year up to Frozen Rush and first time driving a Pro 4 truck. We came in with the third place, which I was, you know, stoked on. You know, I kind of expected him to win, but um, it was just hard to see that happen. You know, we're all competitors, we want to win, but 
you know, he took the, the King of the Mountain that year. Checker flag is waving. Ricky Johnson is your winner. 2015 coming into Frozen Rush. He's not the young bull anymore. He's won multiple championships. He's won the Vol 500 multiple times. It was a lot of pressure, you know, lining up against the guy that won last year. Teacher versus student. Here we go, the finals at Red Bull Frozen Rush. To come away with the win, uh, you know, it couldn't be any better, you know. And Bryce Menzies wins Frozen Rush 2015. Now it comes up 2016. 2016, we're about, about to find, to find out. out. Well, here we go. Teacher versus student, round two. Last year, Bryce Menzies beats Rick Johnson, takes the Frozen Rush trophy away. Rick Johnson, 365 days later, trying to take it back from Bryce Menzies here in the final, Cameron. And if you remember last year's final run, we never really got to see them battle. Rick Johnson made a huge mistake on the very first jump of the course. And from there, Bryce Menzies had it. So now, hopefully, we get to see them door handle to door handle all the way to the end. Well, with six laps of racing, I expect to see some mistakes. But that's the thing that everybody's been talking about is going mistake free. And, and I don't think we're going to see an early mistake from these drivers. I, I do think they're going to attack. But I don't think that we're going to see them take a lot of early risks, so to speak. They're going to want to get a look at the course and make sure after one lap around where they're at. But again, no mistakes is the key. And every time we've seen an issue so far, it's by someone overdriving for the most part. And that's something we want to try to avoid as a driver. And so uh, Bryce has done a great job. Ricky has done a great job. It's hard to pick one at this point, to be honest. There's Rick Johnson right there. You see him on board and see how calm and cool collected. I feel like that's been his program through these rounds. He's been taking a little something off, entering some of the tighter corners and not making mistakes. Now, Bryce Menzies has been pretty much aces all weekend. He did uncork it maybe a little too much in his qualifying run yesterday, but in the races so far today, he's been solid. And an interesting story also with those race trucks. Rick Johnson has the exact same truck he raced last year, hadn't raced it since then, basically was in storage. And uh, Bryce Menzies in the truck that he won with last year. So both of them pretty familiar with the equipment. There won't be any excuses as far as still dialing things in. Absolutely, I agree with you. And the one thing that you have to think about is how they've gone through the day and uh, what's transpired here. And, and everybody has felt switched on, but you know, there's been a wild ride for a few of the drivers here, and that's what they need to avoid as we move into this. And wow, wow. that's the kind of thing, that cupped out edge that you cannot see. Uh, Bryce Menzies talked about it in an interview earlier. You're going to have to go for it, but you're not sure exactly what you're getting to. And this is Scott Douglas, who had the lead in his first round run and then hits the wall and tumbles over. Uh, he had this one tucked away. But as he told us, even though they have spotters watching, the way this course is set up, they don't really know where they are, if they're behind or ahead. So basically, even if someone has a big lead, they're going to push. Carl Renazer pushed so hard in the semifinal run, he lit the truck on fire. So no one is safe. And to make it even more challenging, six laps in the finals instead of four like we've seen earlier. Well, the real big difference for me is that Bryce Menzies has been racing the Pro 4 all year long. He's able to win one of the races in the Lucas Oil Series. Ricky has not been racing in the Pro 4. So maybe the edge to Bryce, uh, purely out of the fact that he's been switched on and racing all year, but Ricky has definitely not looked like he's been missing out in here. I mean, he oh. came into this thing uh, aggressive and spot on, number one qualifier. Uh, there's a lot going into this and uh, 23 years in age separation, if I'm not mistaken. So, and Ricky has been racing all of those years. Give us a little insight as to the relationship between these two. The Menzies family brought in Rick Johnson along with several other veteran drivers to help teach young Bryce Menzies to get him to this level, and now they're fighting each other. Well, I think Bryce has been able to glean a lot from many different drivers that have been on the Menzies Motorsports team. Ricky Johnson was uh, the most recent driver that was with the team, and, and I think that the one thing Bryce has been able to take away is he knows what Ricky is going to do, and he might know where Ricky's strengths and weaknesses are. I'm really impressed by Bryce as a young driver at 28 years of age that he has really been able to switch himself on to everything going on around him, no matter what he's driving, whether it's in Baja or in short course, two or four wheel drive, four wheel drive here today on the snow. And he says next year he'd like to maybe compete in the Dakar Rally, but also wants to come and race Frozen Rush. We'll see how that turns out. This is it. Once again, Rick Johnson against Bryce Menzies, a rematch of last year's final. RJ out for revenge. Bryce looking to defend the crown. Drivers are pumped up, and the fans are here at Red Bull Frozen Rush for the final they all wanted to see, teacher versus student, again. 
and a completely different style of race course than they had last year. So it's really hard to pick who's going to have the advantage. And they're still setting them for the start. And now it will go to the green flag as we are locked and loaded. Here it is. They're going to bring the RPMs up. The fans come to life here at Sunday River. Rick Johnson against Bryce Menzies at Frozen Rush 2016. And the 15 second board is off. It is time to party. Six laps of racing three times around each one of the lanes for both drivers. Here we go. Oh, Bryce Menzies will go from that right lane. He'll go into the blue lane. Ricky has a quick chicane. Here's the jump where Johnson spun the truck last year. He makes it through cleanly now, so it is Indeed, head to head, top of the hill. And Menzies goes down into that under part of the jump. He cleans it well. And here's Ricky at the top. Ball oh, turn. Whoa. Kills it again. Precision. Great perfection. Now let's watch and see how this track has broken down. So Bryce is going to be the first one into the ball turn. Ricky now negotiating some of that chicane. So now the drivers will switch. If you haven't been following, they're going to switch lanes as they go to the second of six laps. Precision, like you said, for Rick Johnson, even those downhill motors, which have been kicking most of the trucks sideways. This jump where he crashed last year, no mistakes out of the man at all. So Rick Johnson looking great. Menzies is going to have to mount a come from behind charge. We're on board with Menzies, and he is definitely pushing it, trying to catch up to the 48. And Bryce working his way through the chicane, and great. Oh, just great driving as they're going to come out nearly side by side. Now Bryce has the run on the outside. Ricky oh! has that rough inside section, and Bryce is going to lead going into that bottom bull turn. Johnson going to try to tuck it inside oh, of the entrance. Menzies! Menzies is sideways. Johnson follows him in. It's absolutely wheel to wheel as they come out. Now remember, it's a six lap final. We've been watching four lap races all day, so we're only a third of the way through this one. Wow, Bryce risked a lot going into that bottom bolter, and it looked like it almost got out from underneath it just a little bit, but control chaos is what it's all about as we have a great shot of Ricky going to the top, pushing just a bit, but he nails it. He goes a, a quite a bit more outside than he did on the first time around and uh, taking a little bit of a different line. Maybe he saw something he didn't like the last time he was up there, so he decided to go to the outside. Back to the moguls comes Rick Johnson has to close in. Whoa, perfect job turning those moguls into double jumps. Using a little bit of the motocross background there. But Menzies is riding, driving flawlessly up front. What a great ride for him. And can Johnson derail the momentum that Menzies has that victory last year? Like you said, a full season of racing under his belt this year where Johnson was off. Menzies at the top. The top ball, oh, wow, oh, carrying so much speed and looking so smooth. Now watch as they come back together. This is the second time that this is going to happen. But look, Menzies has a massive advantage now going into what will be that bull turn. Oh, and it looks like a crash. For, oh, I thought he was going to throw it away. What a save. Unbelievable save for Ricky Johnson. That is pure instinct driving skill. So much time inside of a race vehicle. But that's definitely going to cost him more time as Menzies heads towards the top. All right. He does have time to work with, though, as Menzies has pulled away. And then a bigger advantage after Johnson makes a mistake. But again, extra laps in this final. It's not over yet. Menzies going underneath. Now, this is where Johnson had the problem. Menzies has to go through those, those whoops that are really cupped out. So we'll see how Menzies is able to tackle it. Oh, and wow, so much action going on on the mountain. Oh, and Ricky, Ricky the misses there. the line just a, yep. just a little bit. That's something to look at. So here's Johnson coming downhill, giving everything he has to try to make up ground. Just a precise performance for Menzies. He has had the least amount of mistakes here today, and everybody said that would be the key. There's Whoa. the seven over the blue lane. In the red lane is Johnson. Menzies caught that inside edge and really uh, put the truck up on two wheels. He's able to reel it in, but it scrubs his speed as he's going up through the uphill. And uh, so that's going to cost him a little bit of time as well. Here's Menzies. Ooh, nice looking turn. Nice, nice at the top there as he heads into the chicane. 
Trying we'll to bring it home. See if they'll be close. Ricky's in that under position, but he is quite a bit behind. This is going to be Menzies' race to lose as he heads into that bottom bowl turn. This is it. He said there was some serious pressure to deal with trying to win this thing a second year in a row. Rick Johnson threw everything at him that he had. Almost crashed. He was going so hard, but it won't be enough. Bryce Menzies wins, throws a rush. And a huge donut for Bryce Menzies right at the finish line. And Ricky Johnson powder coats him as well. So both drivers excited. This is a double snow angels here as they celebrate together. Teammates, a mentor and a student facing off in the finals. And they both gave it everything they had. So Rick Johnson avoided the big mistake this time. It was great to see a true heads-up battle of who had the speed. It didn't come down to one big crash or mistake. It came down to the fact that Bryce Menzies just executed brilliantly in every inch of this course for six laps. All right, we're going to take a look at that over-under. And this is Bryce coming in. Now, look at the big hit in the snow, but he's able to keep the direction well, uh, although it did scrub some speed there. And as we go to the top bowl turn, this is Ricky Johnson, I believe. Look at the rotation. Uh, perfect execution there and able to get right on the throttle on that inside and set for the beginning of that chicane. And the down here, here's Johnson. And you see where they, they come together here. Bryce has that run, but Ricky has to negotiate what are more vicious uh, whoops or rollers. It looks like, although Bryce is carrying quite a bit more speed, they were very tight at this point. Yeah, Johnson was as close as he wanted to be, and Menzies, we thought, was going to throw it away in that corner, but he reeled it back in, and there's the camaraderie between these two who go way back. <laughs> the classic bench racing, the hand karate chops, as they talk about their lines and the bikes getting kicked around. So there it is, Bryce Menzies getting to celebrate alone now as he takes off some of the safety equipment two years in a row. He said the pressure was there. He really felt it. I thought it was cool that he was honest about that, but he was able to shrug it off. You would have never known watching him drive today that he was under any pressure at all. And you know, sometimes I think, to be honest, Bryce mentions the pressure, and, and maybe it is a factor, but at, knowing Bryce and having been around him and, and being a part of their team at one point, you never really see pressure get to Bryce or anybody on the team. Everybody's so calm, cool, and collected, and so they may talk about it, but you never really see it come out in Bryce's, uh, Bryce driving or his results. And again, right on top of the box uh, for Menzies, that number one position, a familiar spot for him. This guy has big plans, not only great here in the snow, but as you mentioned, he got a victory this year in the Lucas Oil Off-Road Series in a Pro 4 truck. Always a contender when you folks are racing down there in the Baja 1000. And uh, he wants to become, his goal, goal ultimately, become the first American to ever win the Dakar Rally overall. He might get that started next year. So he's got a, a wide variety of talents, and that includes apparently driving very fast on snow. Tina? and Bryce down there to get it set. Fans are all fired up here. They want to get over this fence and get closer to the race winner. <laughs> a massive crowd, and I don't think they wanted to be too close when uh, Bryce and Ricky decided to do donuts because yeah. snow dust was flying everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. You want to build a snowman? Well, they just give you a really big pile uh, to work with as they take these trucks all the way around. Rick Johnson pulling up over there. And also, don't forget Rob McCachran, who will be uh, considered third place today. No trophy race since Renazetter wasn't able to go. A good run for old Rob Mack taking third. Okay, I think we have Tina once again with our winner for the second year in a row, Bryce Menzies. Well, that's right, and Bryce, again, another win for you defending your championship. How much more calculated did you have to be on that final? In his six laps in, uh, against my teammate, Ricky Johnson, I uh, know what he's going to do. He's going to go all out, and that's what I did. And I mean, it's six laps. In the middle of it, I forgot which lane I wanted to go to. I was, like, so confused, and luckily I pulled it off, and... Um, coming down on the left side, that thing's getting so G'd out that I almost endoed the first lap. 
and somehow just pulled it off, you know, the, the, the guy with the least most stakes, but this event, I am worn out. I was on the wheel like no other. I don't even, I'm not even this tired after a short course race, after a desert race, so I sh it's just unreal. I love coming up here in Maine. I love the crowd. Thank you guys so much. Um, everybody that helps me out, you know, Red Bull, BF Goodrich for putting this event on, Pennzoil, um, GoPro, KMC Wheels, everybody that helps me. Thank you guys so much. And you and Ricky go way back, racing up against him, especially in a finals for the second year in a row. Does that make you want to be a better driver? Of course, you know, Ricky was my teammate. He helped me win three Pro 2 championships. He won two Pro 4 championships. And uh, at the bottom, we're like, everybody's going to think this is scripted. Two Red Bull trucks in the final. But, you know, it's just the guys that put in the work that come up here and uh, hang it all out there. And that's what we did. We've made the least amount of mistakes. But uh, we, we held that throttle wide open. And we were talking after the race and just, just how gnarly it was. I mean, this course got so chewed up. But that's what makes it fun about it. And I'm, I'm just stoked. You know, I had so much pressure on me coming from last year and winning, and everybody's like, are oh, you going to win again? So I'm just glad I could actually pull it off. Yeah, well, a huge congratulations. Your second win here at Red Bull Frozen Rush. Bryce Menzies, congratulations. Yes, the super truck remains undefeated. That's the truck Rick Johnson won with two years ago, and now the last two years have been won with uh, Bryce Menzies, but it's not coming back next year because Bryce told me this morning he just sold the thing. It's well, last run. I it said, might come, it. It might come back with somebody maybe, else. Maybe, you know, he might right. have to compete against the Magic <laughs> Truck, so we'll see. But, uh, you know, one thing I'm very impressed by is that both Bryce and Ricky had to recollect the trucks a number of times, especially on that left line when they're coming through those moguls, and, and there was one time where I really thought that Ricky Johnson was going to crash. In fact, I said... It was a crash because it started happening, and uh, I'm really impressed by what they brought. And egg on my face a little bit because I really thought the course was going to break down more than it did. The track crew said they got a lot of water down and got it iced down, going to make it a little bit harder. And props to them. They were able to give us a great competition surface. Yeah, it was about as good as it could be considering it was unseasonably mild leading into this race and it allowed for great heads-up racing. Let's send it back down to Tina with the runner-up. Well, and Ricky's driver instinct definitely kicked in with that mistake. Walk us through that. Well, there's only so much that you can claim as a driver, you know, because I saw snow through the windshield and I saw snow through the side and I just turned into it and just hammered the gas. You know, first off, I want to congratulate Bryce Menzi. That truck is the undisputed, undefeated champion here. Um, they have me a little bit, t I think, better on suspension this time, but it was a close race. I just, I, I drove hard and, and made a small mistake, but Hey, we're here at Frozen Russian. You have to give it 100%. So they can't say that old guys don't push it because uh, I was definitely on the edge. But before I quit, I just want to wish my, my daughter, my beautiful daughter, a uh, happy birthday. She turned 21. I wish she was here. And also say I love you to my wife, Stephanie, and Luke and Jake. I wish you guys were all here. Stephanie is here, though. Well, a huge congratulations on finishing on the podium again. What a great finals, Jason. Absolute thanks, Tina. And what a save by Rick Johnson. Oh we were just gosh. watching there. <laughs> That's about as close to a crash as you can get. Uh, the save by Ricky Johnson that we watched just a little bit earlier, I mean, unbelievable. But all the drivers really having to uh, go be above and beyond. I mean, they have to go wide open. But with the snow, you're not able to see where those kickers are. So sometimes it's just total reaction. And, and Ricky said, I can't even claim it as a driver. He basically just stabbed the throttle to straighten it out. Yeah, and it got the job done this time. So great racing. Uh, a lot of people figured it would be a Johnson and Menzies final. That's exactly what happened. It was good that Johnson got out clean and they were able to battle it out all the way through. And such a banner day for the sport of uh, short course off-road truck racing to have these great drivers out here competing together. And don't forget, we will be back. You can watch all of this on NBC, part of the Red Bull Signature Series on January 30th. If you need a Frozen Rush experience right now, go inside the trucks and inside the mind of today's drivers. Go to RedBull.com backslash Frozen Rush. And you can also see this entire broadcast again on Red Bull TV if you missed the beginning of it. Great racing. Congratulations to Bryce Menzies. For Cameron Steele and Tina Dixon, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching Red Bull Frozen Rush 2016.